Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Happy Friday. So I mentioned in my video on Wednesday that I would not have a post review Friday for you guys today, <clears throat> which I kind of <laughs> wish that I hadn't told myself that because I have not diamond painted since I filmed Monday's video for you guys. Um, <laughs> it is Wednesday, so it's only been a couple of days, but I've made no progress. <laughs> I am in the same spot that I ended um, our whipping chat in on Monday. So uh, in the background of this video, I will be diamond painting, um, but the focus of today's video is how I diamond paint quickly. Now, something that I get a lot of comments on is you diamond paint so fast. How do you get so many kits done each month? Um, why do you diamond paint so quickly? So I'm going to address all of that in today's video. Um, I just want to start with Diamond painting is not a race. If you are finishing one kit every three months, that is okay. <laughs> um, just because I finish two or three a month doesn't make me a better diamond painter than you. Um, and I'll touch on why I think I am able to complete kits quicker um, maybe than others. I will touch on that when we get into the actual like bulk of the video. But I don't want this to come off as like, I finish so many kits a month. Like, you guys know that. You watch my videos, you watch my post reviews, you watch my month in reviews. You know that I complete generally more than one kit a month. Again, I just want to reiterate that that does not make me a, a better diamond painter than others. Um, diamond painting is one of my main hobbies. I do a lot of it. It is how I enjoy spending my downtime when I'm not at work, uh, when I'm not doing adult things. I enjoy putting on a YouTube video or putting on a TV show and diamond painting while I'm watching that. Um, so that definitely, play that definitely, play what's the word? How am, I trying how am I trying to say that? That plays a factor, I guess. That, that's a factor, plays a part, I guess is what I'm trying to say, in the amount that I diamond paint. So in the background, I will be working on my custom of Luna. I give you guys, Luna is my cat, by the way. I give you some details in Monday's video if you're interested. Um, all my accessories are the same as they were for that video. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I do have you guys up a little bit higher. I don't know if I like that or not. <laughs> um, let me, actually, I think I do because you guys are seeing the whole, um, the whole section that I'm working on. I will say that you guys are up higher, so I cannot see you from where I'm sitting. So if I seem to go like off, um, <laughs> off the camera a little bit, it's because I can't see what I'm doing. So let's go ahead and talk about how I think I diamond paint quickly. Maybe these, maybe this will give you some tips or tricks or things to try if you're looking to increase your diamond painting speed. Not that you need to. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that I do when I start a diamond painting is I measure my sections ahead of time. Um, so I section using washi tape, as hopefully you guys can see. Uh, if you can't see in this video, <clears throat> I've definitely talked about it before in other videos. I like to measure my sections so that I, it gives me an idea of how long a diamond painting is going to take me if I know how many sections are going to be in the diamond painting. So this particular kit is four rows of four columns. So roughly 16 ish days. Now there are days where I will do two sections. Um, so that'll change it, but 
I can basically give myself a guideline of saying, okay, I need 15 days to, sorry, 16 days to do this project, which allows me to plan other kits that I might want to work on. Now, this particular kit is quite confetti heavy, so that would lead me to believe that I would like to schedule a color blocky kit after this one, because I could probably move through that one quicker. I would say the biggest thing about sectioning your canvas is you kind of have to work with it for a little bit on multiple kits to find out what a manageable section is for you. I personally like to section a size that I know if I sit down, I know I'm going to finish that section. Now, I do work a full-time job, so I work during the day. So I, I like to know that the section I'm making is something that I can finish in roughly three-ish hours. I tend to come home from work, um, do <laughs> the adulty things, you know, like pick up. Maybe I had laundry in from the night before. Maybe I had to run the dishwasher. I do all of those like little house things. Steven will get home from work. We'll kind of chat, you know, the whole how was your day, blah, blah, blah. And then it's time to make dinner. And then it's time to take a shower. <laughs> you know, like all of that stuff. So I generally sit down to Diamond Pete. I, I prefer to be sitting down to Diamond Pete around 6, 6.30. And I generally diamond paint until about nine. So the section that I'm making, I wanna know I can get done between the hours of six and nine, three hours. Now this kit, like I mentioned, confetti heavy, this size section is probably what I'm getting done in that amount of time. Um, I personally like to be on the larger size of sections. I can tell you maybe how big this section is. I think it's so this is 20.5 centimeters tall by 14 centimeters wide so that is a roughly a decent size for me um, it is kind of in the range that I go for I generally go for like 15 to 20 either direction whatever is somewhat even amongst all of the sections now that is just me liking things to be symmetrical you can totally eyeball your rows your sections absolutely um i prefer to work in larger sections because i tend to find that i'm doing less color changes so it's less wasted time of okay let me put this color back let me find the right color let me pour it in let me shake it out let me lay the drills down put that color back find the next color um which i i personally feel like saves you time especially in the beginning because i don't know about you guys but when i'm starting a new diamond painting i have literally no idea where any of the colors are <laughs> it's like when i'm first starting a new one the drill layout in my containers is from the previous one, is what's in my mind. So I'm looking for those colors and I'm like, wait a second, this is a different diamond painting. <laughs> so um, that is my preference to work in larger sections. I know some people prefer to work in smaller sections for a similar reason. Um, they, they feel like they're finishing that section really quickly so they're able to get more sections done and that might work for you as well. Personally for me the larger sections are what prevails. The next category I have is multi-placing. <laughs> now I know there are some purist diamond painting diamond painters out there who only will use a single placer and I say more power to you. There are times where I use a single placer, but even, I don't know if you guys can see exactly from that angle, I just put down one drill and I still used my multi-placer. I, <laughs> I used to swear by a four placer. It used to be the only thing I would use, um, but I slowly worked my way up to larger multi-placers. I tend to sit somewhere between the seven and 10 placer. Uh, anything bigger than the 10 placer is just 
weird to me. I will still use a four placer if I'm working on a very confetti heavy diamond painting. Uh, I think I actually have a five placer. Yeah, I have a five placer right now. Multi placers save you so much time. Is there a learning curve? Yes, absolutely. Do you kind of have to give up a little bit of the perfection, <laughs> perfectionist that comes with diamond painting? Yes. Um, but also the longer you work with a multi-placer, the better it is, the, like the, the easier it is for you to use. I swear by my multi-placer. I very rarely flip my pen for my single placer. I really only flip for a single placer if I'm trying to adjust drills. So if something's like a little crooked, I'll use my single placer to move it back into line. But for the most part, I exclusively use my multi-placer. My next category is good putty slash wax, etc. So a good, something that you like to work with in your single placer or your multi-placer. Something that is long lasting is key for me. I think that finding a good putty that will last allows me to, that finding a good putty that lasts that I can use one fill for an entire diamond painting is like the Rolls Royce of diamond paintings for me, <laughs> or of uh, diamond painting putty for me. I, not having to mess around with whatever you have in your single placer or multi placer, it just really changes the game. I stuck with the pink wax in diamond painting kits for a very long time. It's fine, but it can get a little frustrating when it's like every section you're refilling. This is 100% a first world problem. Like if all you are able to afford or all you're able to get your hands on is the pink putty or pink wax, it works. I'm. This is like a luxury diamond painting accessory category in my list. I am someone who is a bit of a diamond painting putty connoisseur. <laughs> I like to try what's out there. Um, and I have found some really, really good ones that work for me. Um, I also like kind of a caveat to that is finding a putty or a wax that works well with special drills is also a game changer. I can't tell you guys how many times I've been working on a kit and you get to your ABs or your crystals and whatever putty you're using sticks to them and you cannot get them off of your pen. That is so infuriating to me. <laughs> so finding a putty that works for you that also works with special drills is a game changer because you're not trying to pick out the ABs and then switching tips and using a uh, like a pink wax or a blue wax because those generally do work well with ABs. Um, yeah, good good putty or wax is just, is key. Um, and then kind of going back to my initial point about good putty or wax is that it's the, nice to not have to worry about messing or refilling with the wax. Um, for example, if you're working with a putty that's maybe not as long lasting, um, suddenly it's not picking up your drills and you're having to mess around with it and move it around or refill, it just takes up extra time that you really don't want to have to deal with. Um, for me personally, when I'm sitting down to diamond paint, I want the ease <laughs> of diamond painting. I don't want to be messing around with my accessories and my kit and, um, and all of that fun stuff. Now, something that I I think might be a little bit controversial. I don't really want you guys to take it that way, but because I'm aware that not everybody has access or the ability to purchase what I'm going to talk about next. And there's a couple of like subcategories in this particular category and I called it be picky with kits. <laughs> now this kind of has two directions that I'm going to go with it. Number one is sometimes going for quality kits is helpful. Now I have worked on plenty of 
budget friendly kits when I first started diamond painting that were fine um, that I didn't I'm not gonna say that I didn't have any issues with because I don't know if I would have realized if I was having an issue back then um, for reference I did start diamond painting in 2019 when it was kind of just starting to take off here in the United States I know it was popular elsewhere um, but I think it really blew up in 2020, obviously. But um, I started in the fall of 2019. And having a quality diamond painting kit just makes the process a lot easier. I don't really know that a lot of companies still use double-sided adhesive. Um, <laughs> I would I would recommend going for poured glue if you're able. It's just so much easier whether whether it's a budget friendly kit or a higher end kit like a Diamond Art Club or something like that. Um, the poured glue is just so much easier to work with as a whole. You're not having to deal with rivers and bubbles and not being able to roll your canvas as you would with a double sided kit. Um, but also the quality of the printing, um, of the symbols onto the canvas before the glue is laid down, that's very important when you're trying to move through a kit. If you're stuck on a symbol and you can't figure out if it's, you know, the number eight, the letter B, or the letter S, you're struggling with that for too long. <laughs> Um, I say those letters because stay tuned for the post review on this one because we'll talk about that. Um, but I will say that at times quality does win out in terms of speed of diamond painting. That's just in my experience. And if I had to cease buying quality, quote unquote quality or higher end diamond painting tomorrow, I would still... You know, diamond paint, obviously I have a large stash, <laughs> but I would still diamond paint using budget kits. It's it's not like a an attack on the budget world at all. Um, my issues with the budget world come more from like a copyright standpoint versus a quality standpoint because, like I said, I have worked on really good kits. That is just something that my brain kind of went off on when I was like... I want to talk about being picky with your kits and obviously I do think at times that that does kind of win out but the real main focus of my be picky with kits category is look closely at your diamond painting if you're able figure out if you like confetti or not because a confetti kit is going to take you much much longer than a kit that's full of color blocking. Now for context, just in case you're new to diamond painting, when you watch people or you listen to people talk about diamond paintings and we say, this is so confetti heavy, it means that your section is full of all different colors. So you have, I think this kit has like 46-ish colors. Let's just say this section has 40 of those colors in it. This isn't a huge section. It may be large to some of you, but it's not a giant section. 40 colors in this small of an area would mean that you have very little of some of those colors. So you're constantly changing drills, moving drills around, and that takes up time. When we say that a, a kit or a section is full of color blocking, we mean that you have big areas of, this is symbol letter J. So say this entire area here was letter J, that is color blocking. You can put a bunch of drills on your multi-placer, bam, 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 bam. You're done with half of this section in five to 10 minutes. So if you are looking for a kit, say you've had a very confetti heavy kit and you're like, man, I just need to get through one quickly, make me feel good you're gonna wanna look for a color blocking kit. And there are a lot of artists at these higher end companies that cater to the color blocking 
community, if you will, sub-community of diamond painting. For example, Hannah Lynn is generally an artist who I can run through those kits in four to five days just because of the amount of color blocking. Mandy Manzano is another good one. All of that black line work, you can move through that pretty quickly if you're comfortable with a multi-placer. I feel like I should say I, not you, because I don't want to assume <laughs> or make you feel um, like you don't do that. Um, I personally like a healthy, healthy mix of both color blocking and confetti in a kit. This one, like I've mentioned, is pretty confetti heavy, so I am moving through it slower than I had anticipated. But if I'm looking to get through a kit, it's the end of the month and I have like five or six days left and I'm like, I really want to work on something. I'm going to look through my stash and find something that has a lot of color blocking that I feel like I can move through quickly. Also, kind of off the back of that, round kits, diamond paintings with round drills tend to go faster for me personally. Um, things don't have to be as perfect, as straight. Obviously with square drills, you have diamonds that are like sticking up to each other on all angles. Um, so your rows and lines have to be somewhat straight. Uh, so there's a bit more precision needed for square kits with rounds there's just extra wiggle room so I personally find like I move through round kits very very quickly but that's definitely a personal preference I have talked to people in the community who say they work up squares faster than rounds so that is your preference you'll just have to to figure that one out for yourself uh, my next category is try not to work so much on placing your drills perfectly. Now, when I first started diamond painting, this was very difficult for me. I wanted everything to be perfect, perfect lines. Um, I just wanted it to look amazing. Now, I feel like that's a common thing in diamond painting, but it's really not necessary. <laughs> now, I still focus pretty hard on the edge of my diamond painting. I like for the outermost line to be as straight as possible. The rest of it kind of works itself out as you work up the kit. More so with squares than rounds, but it still happens. So when you're placing drills down, you have obviously your symbol, which is the guide of where your drill should go. But you have a bunch of them of drills around it. So if you lay one drill off a teeny tiny bit, when you come in and put the drill next to it, it needs to fit into its spot. So things are going to straighten out. So not being super particular about where you're placing your drills saves you time in the long run, which I think is why some people single place mostly because they want to know that they're getting it perfectly straight. That's fair. If you are someone who prefers to diamond paint with your single placer, like I said earlier, more power to you. Um, but eventually things are going to straighten out. Your, your lines aren't going to be like this Maybe they'll be a little bit like, you know, uh, I'm a little off. But once you get in your, into your diamond painting and you see it finished, your lines aren't going to be diagonal <laughs> because it's just not possible as long as you're putting all of the drills on to the canvas. Now, like I've mentioned, that is a personal preference. Uh, if you are someone who needs or wants the drills to be absolutely perfect, it's going to take you probably a little bit longer. Um, but for me personally, unless I'm gifting the diamond painting, I don't really care. Obviously, if I'm hanging it in my house or if I'm giving it to someone, I want it to be as good as possible. But the majority of my diamond paintings get stored away. So <laughs> like I film my video, my post review, it sits on the bed until I do post review Friday and then it gets put away. And then at the end of the year, I take all my finished diamond paintings out, I show them all to you and then they get packed up again. 
that's how I personally do this hobby. I know others can't stand that. They want everything on display. I wish I had a mansion that I could do that. <laughs> I think I'm on, I think this is like my 148th kit maybe. Um, so I wish <laughs> I could display all of them. Um, but the perfect lines just isn't really a thing for me. It's not something that I worry too much about. The last category is practice makes perfect. <laughs> now I touched on this at the beginning of the video, but in my eyes, the longer that you diamond paint, the better you quote unquote get. I don't necessarily feel like diamond painting is a craft or a hobby that you need to have a lot of skill to do. Um, I would say as long as you can use a pencil or a pen, you can probably diamond paint. Um, and I feel like some people view diamond painting as not necessarily a craft for that exact reason, because the image is there for you. You're just following the guide. So I just don't feel like you need a ton of skill to diamond paint. As you do it, you learn, you get better. Practice makes perfect, like everything else in life. If you feel, if you've just completed your first diamond painting and you feel like, Ooh, this could be better. Okay, well, when you do your second one, you're gonna be like, okay, I learned this from my first kit, what can I do better? Now, like I just mentioned, I'm almost 150 kits into my diamond painting uh, career, <laughs> if, if you will. Um, I've done a lot of diamond paintings. So I've, I feel like I've streamlined my personal diamond painting-ness. <laughs> to help me complete kits as I need to. Now, I feel like it's a little bit different for myself and other people who make videos or Instagram or TikTok content. We are sharing diamond painting related things with you. I need to be completing diamond painting so that I can share them with you on my channel. I have an entire segment called Post Review Friday where I only talk about finished diamond paintings. <laughs> so I need to be finishing diamond paintings to share them with you. And I try to keep them relevant. Uh, I'm very much a seasonal diamond painter as I've talked about many times on my channel. So I don't wanna be sharing a kit that I finished in October now I want to share it with you guys in October when you're in the spooky vibes and you want to see the Halloween content. That's not to say I won't unbox an off-season kit every now and then, but I try to keep things current. Um, as of right now, I'm caught up on all of my post reviews, which is why you haven't had a post review Friday for two weeks in a row. I need to finish this kit so I can share it with you guys in my next post review. That's how I like to do it. I prefer to have my post reviews up before my month in review just so that I can direct you guys to the post review for more information. That kind of went off on a little bit of tangent of a tangent, but the root of this particular category is practice makes perfect. Keep diamond painting. Your third one is going to be better than your first one. Your 10th one is going to be better than your third one. Um, the more that you do it, the better you'll get. And the final thing that I just want to end with is don't compare yourself to others. Take your time. Enjoy the craft. Enjoy diamond painting. That's why you're doing it. And eventually, things will improve if you feel like they need to. You will eventually get quicker at diamond painting. It'll just happen. The more experience you have, the quicker you'll become. So if you're on like kit number five and you're like, how does this crazy lady me. <laughs> How does this crazy lady get three diamond paintings done in a month? Well, you're on number five. I'm on number close to 150. So don't let other people get you down. I know it's easy to compare yourself to others in everything in life, but I think as like a general consensus, a lot of us who diamond paint, we do it for the relaxation. I am somebody who is high anxiety. I <laughs> have a lot of stuff going or going on in my mind. When I sit down to diamond paint, it's like, 
I can let everything else go. This is what I'm focused on. That's why I love diamond painting so much. Now, do I put pressure on myself? Yes, you guys know that. We've talked about it in videos before. Um, sorry that I'm not diamond painting. I'm just, my brain has kind of like moved on from that. <laughs> but I like to have a plan. I plan my kits ahead of time. I plan my videos for the month ahead of time. I do give myself deadlines. You do not have to do that. This is how my brain works. I work well knowing, okay, first two, first two weeks of the month, this is the kit you're focused on. I like that. <laughs> it works for me. It might not work for you. If you're somebody who is looking at your stash and you can just be like, you know what? I want to work on that diamond painting. First of all, more power to you. I wish I could do that. Just enjoy diamond painting. Don't feel like you need to speed through your kits. This kit, for example, is a kit that I want to savor. I want to enjoy it. It's my first ever custom. It's my cat, Luna. I don't want to rush through this one. So I'm not. I'm really enjoying working on it. And I think that you ultimately need to decide your own diamond painting speed. You need to decide how many kits a month are feasible for you. Don't feel like you need to up your numbers just because that's what a few people in the community do. So hopefully that was helpful. <laughs> uh, if you guys have any follow-up questions, I can definitely touch base on them in my whip and chat on Monday or in a future video. I can just talk to you guys in the comments. Um, I think that the beginning of the video was hopefully helpful. Um, with actually diamond painting and then hopefully the second part was just helping you guys feel better about maybe not being the fastest diamond painting also speed is relative like something speedy for me might be really slow for you so anyway <laughs> I feel like I need to say thanks for coming to my TED talk but I hope that you guys enjoyed today's enjoyed today's video uh, I hope it was helpful to some degree, let me know in the comments down below. Um, I am hoping to have a full week of videos for you guys next week. I do leave to go out of town on Wednesday, so I need to do a bit of pre-filming. Hopefully I can get everything done, um, but I will announce anything or any changes in the community tab. So again, thank you guys for watching. I will definitely see you all on Monday. I hope everybody has a great weekend. Bye.